initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at The Green Knight. I knew nothing about this movie, and I knew even less about The Green Knight lore. I had no clue. It was like a 10,000-year-old poem that was written back way before Jesus was even born or whatever. I just knew absolutely nothing about The Green Knight. So I went in here without any expectations, and I gotta say, what an experience. I can absolutely say this is the most unique movie I've seen this year, from the visuals to the music to the set design, costuming, pretty much every aspect of this movie is unlike anything else that has come out in all of 2021. It's extremely impressive and it looks and sounds extremely good. But not only that, it's filmed in a unique way. It's filmed like it's a fucking riddle that you have to solve while watching it, or like a Lego set without the instructions, and I don't think everyone's gonna like that. I personally didn't mind, though there were some things that I was just a little upset that they didn't give clarity to, that I think were extremely important to at least touch on. Like sometimes throughout this journey of Gawain, they will introduce a character only for them to not exist 30 seconds later. So you're constantly questioning what's real and what's not a lot. And there's constant, like, abrupt cuts to different things especially towards the end of the movie and it just makes you very confused on what's really happening throughout the journey there's a lot of this where there's just like these giant leaps that just don't make a whole lot of sense in the way that the movie flows towards the end of this review i will do a couple of spoilers so i can tell you exactly what i'm talking about and give a few examples i don't want to spoil too much but i will do a section for spoilers towards the end so if you want to know a little more about what i mean you can stick around but yeah, throughout this movie, there are times where it's like, why? Or what the fuck is going on? I also don't like sometimes that it takes way too long on a single shot. The intro, to me, was really upsetting and the biggest culprit of this. For like the first almost two to three minutes, it is a single static shot of one little area and almost nothing happening. And then it pulls out, and then the movie really starts. It's, it's like, did it need to be that long? Like, it's, I understand that it's a slower movie. It's an A24 film, so if you're not a fan of A24 films, you probably won't like this one. I do like A24, and I do like this movie. But I do think that it went a little too pretentious with some of its shots, and it didn't need to be as slow as it needed to at times. There's another scene, and this one's not a spoiler, where it's showing Gwen. And then it slowly, and I mean fucking like the camera's stuck in a, like thick honey, slowly turns and it keeps turning and turning and fucking turning. It's like an Austin Powers when he's driving the goddamn steamroller and the guy's just like screaming, ah, and it's like 45 seconds of that. That's that shot, but stretched, or stretched across five minutes. So it turns, three minutes go by. And then it does it a full 360, so now we're back on Gwen. something's changed. And then it turns again for another three minutes. It is the longest 360, well, 720 shot of all fucking time. And it was frustrating. Oh my god, I wanted to press fast forward right then and there. There was no reason for it. There was absolutely no reason for the shot to be like that. It didn't need to be that slow. If they wanted to do the 360, they could have sped it up by like two times and it still would have been like a minute of turning and it would have got the point across it's it just there was times that had shot shots like that that just didn't add anything to it and just made it kind of like a headache for no reason overall though i think the movie is fantastic this is not a movie for everybody it's a slow movie for sure but i think it tells a really interesting story and if you really stop and think about it it tells a really profound narrative on honor uh, without giving too much away with what the movie's actually about, and everyone's going to have their own interpretation, but the way I interpreted the movie, it was Gawain's journey to be a more honorable man, and throughout his adventure, he's tested in a multitude of ways. Whether or not he fails, you'd have to watch it to find out. But I think it does a really good job. It doesn't beat the message into you. In fact, it does very little to even feed you a message or even really tell you a story. It's just connecting or barely connecting a series of adventures that Gawain experiences. He made a deal uh, when the Green Knight challenged him to a game and he intends to honor it to the best of his ability. And it, I just really think it was a very interesting and very, very well executed movie. I, en I enjoyed it. I do think it's a movie that not everyone's going to like, of course. Uh, I know some people are expecting it to be more action-oriented. It's not. In fact, there is no action. There isn't a single scene of action in this film, and I am totally fine with that. In fact, I think if there was action, it would take away from the movie. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug the Green Knight into the moist meter. I'm going to give this an 80%. 
uh, like a hard 80%, really close to 85 but uh, I'm going to get into spoilers now, so spoiler warning. The reason that I don't want to put it any higher is because I think it gets too ambiguous and smelling of its own farts. For example, the Green Knight is summoned by Gawain's mother, or at least that's what you're led to believe, because her and some others summon the Green Knight, supposedly, by writing a letter, sealing it, the Green Knight shows up with that same letter right after they finish their ritual, so, I mean, there's clearly a connection there, and it's never explained why she summoned the Green Knight. It doesn't seem like she wanted Gwen to die or anything on a journey. It doesn't seem like she even really wanted to challenge Gwen at all if he was even a part of the Green Knight's mission. So it just leaves so many questions as to, well, why did she summon the Green Knight? What was the point? There was just no indication at all as to what her motive was. And I've only seen speculation and theories online with no real evidence to support it, except for a couple, like some of them saying she wanted Gwen to be a more honorable man, so she summoned the Green Knight hoping that Gwen would pick up the, the challenge and become a better knight or something and then take the throne. But this is all just guessing. There's really nothing in the movie that leads you to believe that was the motive. There's nothing subtle hidden in there that I could pick up on. Maybe I'm too dumb. But... If you can't answer the question of why was the Green Knight there, which is the whole fucking, you know, plot device of the movie, the whole thing that starts the narrative, well, then it doesn't work that well. You just have to accept, okay, he's there for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. Everything that matters is him getting there. I just think it's a huge misstep not at least giving some kind of guidance to the motive of the Green Knight being there and why Gwen's mother summoned him. And then the last thing that I'm going to talk about here for the spoilers without giving too much away is I don't even understand why this fucking happened in the first place. Like, why they even accepted the challenge. Just randomly during Christmas celebration, fucking goofy-ass Groot comes in, the Green Knight. He's like, hey, indulge me in a game. One of your knights strike me down. And then in doing so in a year, I'm going to strike them down. And they're like, of course, we have to do this now because he asked. Like, it, like, all of a sudden, it's a huge deal. So then he, like, just goes there and throws the match, just GG, gets his head chopped off, he's still alive, he's like, okay, now it's your turn in a year. They're like, okay, good, get, glad we solved that. But why even accept that? Why not you be like, get the fuck out? No, we don't want to play your game. We're not going to indulge you. Leave. Like, there was no repercussions for saying no. It's not like, you will play my game or else your kingdom will burn. There was none of that. It was just, will you play a game with me? Yes? Oh, great. Like, there wasn't any reason to say yes. They could just say, get the fuck out. That makes it sound like anyone in the entire kingdom could have just come up and be like, I want to be king, and let's battle for it. And they, by honor, have to say yes and just fight everyone that challenges them. Instead of just saying, no, get out. Just doesn't make sense to me. I feel like they could have just d excused him. So I, I think that was a, a bit weak, too. There should have at least been a, like a repercussion for saying no, but, but there wasn't. So yeah. And also, last thing, seriously this time. And also, why does the entire world know that Gawain uh, sliced the head off of the Green Knight? Nobody knew who the Green Knight was until Gawain killed him, and they're acting like he was some kind of hero. For a whole year, they were just sucking his dick. Like, not just the immediate area around him, but like, the whole of everyone you see knows about the Green Knight all of a sudden, and how Gawain is the hero that chopped his head off. It's like, well, what the fuck do you mean? This... Nobody had heard of him before this, at least not that I picked up on. I didn't hear anyone be like, oh my god, it's, it's the Green Knight. You know who this is? This is the Green Knight. No, they were just like, who's this guy? Okay, we'll play this game. And then he plays the game exactly how it's supposed to be played. And they're like, ah, hero, my god, you've done it, Gwen. Even though it was an open invitation for anyone to just kill him. So, I, I don't know. That also didn't really make too much sense to me. But again, this is uh, an adaptation of just an old poem or something like that like an old fairy tale so of course it's not going to be like the most you know bulletproof plot of all time and i think it was trying to be really true to that nature of storytelling where it's like you just have to excuse some things like there's going to be characters that come out of nowhere there's going to be things that come out of nowhere and you have to accept that and just enjoy the ride which i'm able to do but i still do want to at least point it out since it's a movie and not a fucking ten thousand year old poem now so i just wanted to talk about that again i think it is a very good movie and i enjoyed it that's about it see ya